In this module, I'm going to cover the practical application of the texturing skills that were covered in the last module by using the barrel model uh, that was covered two modules ago in module seven. Now with the barrel model, when that was done, uh, we were left with the UVs laid out. And in the end, uh, I created a UV snapshot. Now, using this UV snapshot, I am going to texture this barrel. So I can begin by coming to this background, and I'm going to come down to the bottom right here in Photoshop, and I'm going to create a new layer. And this is going to be a base layer for the color. I don't know just yet what color I'm looking for, but this is why we do research. So I've already pulled up a few different images of barrels that I grabbed off of the internet. And in general, for this particular one, I'm going to go for one that's a little bit more clean. Uh, oh, let me come back here. You can see there, there's this barrel, there's this barrel, and even between barrels, there are some differences. So this one has three bands on the top and the bottom. This one has four bands on the top and the bottom. These are more of the three band barrels. Um, if you notice, there are some areas where it looks like there's some darkening between the boards, but other areas where it's fairly smooth. And so you, you need to be aware of what it is that you are painting. Once again, get good references uh, to be able to work from, but don't just replicate them. Try and create a caricature of them, them where you're really trying to uh, push things just a little bit. Now, if we wanted to, we could also push things further, and I'll bring these up as examples in a little bit, where we can add additional details. But for right now, I'm just going to go for this clean type of barrel look. So I'm going to drag this out so that I can use it, shrink it down just a little bit, and get this over here in position so that it's easier to work with. I'm then going to grab this and drag it out so that I can have these next to each other and be able to utilize it a little bit better. Now with this barrel, once again, I've got that layer, but now I have kind of a foundation that I want to draw from. So I'm going to go select all, edit fill, and I'm going to select a color. I'm going to grab just like a mid-tone from here, so I'm just dragging across until I find something that I like. Uh, so maybe about there, maybe slightly darker. And that's not the greatest, but it'll at least give me a foundation that I'll build up from that. All right, so with this in place, I can no longer use these as a guide. So what I need to do is I'll come to this background and I can either right click and duplicate layer or by selecting the background, if I hit Control J or Command J on a Mac, I can duplicate that layer. And then I'll bring that layer up above the other one. And this layer, I need to come here to the layer type and change this to screen. And now you notice as I turn it off and on, this provides a guide for me to use as I'm painting. So now I know what it is that I'm painting. So based on the decisions that were made before with the UV mapping, I know that this is the top of the barrel and the bottom of the barrel, and this is the rest of the barrel coming up here to the top and folding over and in, and coming down to the bottom and folding over and in. And so I can use that as a guide to help me as I'm creating everything else. Now as I look at the barrel here, I can see that the staves or the pieces of wood that make up the barrel are different sizes. So I'm going to start by using that. Um, a quick note, if you uh, are going to be coming in and painting, you want to be careful so that you're not painting onto your guide. So I can uh, control alt Z or command alt Z to step back if I need to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got the layer one selected. And I will use the marquee select. And I'm going to start identifying the different board sections in here. So by holding down shift, I can grab the next board and the next one. And I'm just going to keep going. Actually, let me get these a little bit closer together in some of these areas. Get different boards of varying widths. Okay. 
I'm also going to do the same thing for the top. Oh, step back, so. And with, uh, while I'm in the selection, I can just control Z to do an undo rather than a step back. But I'm gonna grab a few boards for across here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to hit Control J. If I turn off that layer, you can see that I've got these boards selected. And I'm just going to use this as a guide. So I'm going to turn off the visibility. I'm going to create a new layer. And then by holding down Control or on a Mac command and then left clicking on the image for this layer 3, that allows me to isolate my selection. So if I want to, I can now come in and start the painting process. I'm just going to use basic brushes. I'll just start by grabbing uh, this number, well, I'll grab the 14, but I can always change it. So increasing or decreasing the size. Because I'm using a style, so I've got a, a Wacom Intuos Pro, um, I can just click on the button that's on the stylus and drag this up or down. If you're using a mouse right now, just to get used to the stuff, uh, come up to the top and then you can adjust the size here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this opacity is lowered down. Grab a couple of these other colors. So get some of these lighter tones. And I'm going to come through and just change some of the overall colors and tones of some of the boards. Grab a little bit over here, get some of these darker colors in. And as you can see, it's not doing a lot, <coughs> but I'm just getting some slight variations right now. And then later on, I can come back and make some additional changes. I'm now going to select inverse. I'm going to come up to this layer on top. And by the way, uh, something that can help is if I do this, if I double click on the layer name, I can actually name these so that I know a little bit better about what's going on. So I can come up here and now with the alternating boards I can paint this up. I'm going to grab another one of these lighter colors for a bit. And because of how the wood's structured, I know that I'm going to be going um, just straight up and down uh, as we've, we're looking at the grain. You see there is some cutting across from the process, but most of it's just running straight up and down. I'm actually going to grab a little bit of this darker color and pick a couple spots, increase the opacity just a touch, a couple spots just to bring out a little bit more of that. And now if I deselect everything, you can see that there's that start of the separation between the boards. On here as well, you have the separation between boards, but in some cases it just feels like it's running together and it has a transition. There's other places where there's this clearly defined transition between the colors of the boards. And so that's what I'm trying to recreate here just a little bit. Now this is still feeling a little bit too pink. So let me uh, come up here, image adjustments. I'm going to change that hue just a little bit. I'm going to lighten that up. And that feels a little bit better for me for that background layer, making sure that I had that layer selected first. And now if I need to, I can continue to add to it. I'm not going to do the uh, complete paint through just because for this video, I want to give you a general idea of how to approach it. Um, but then on your own, I encourage you to take the time to really sit down, uh, start simply like this and develop your textures, but then take the time to really advance it and progress and polish at your textures. So, for example, I could come in here later, and if I really want to, once again, using that layer 3 as a guide, so holding down Control or Command on a Mac and clicking on the, uh, the image right here, I can identify where I'm going to paint, 
come up here to the uh, first boards yet again or to this new layer. I can actually start building up and defining these wood grains. I'm going to bring this back down to 180 so I can get that whole board in there. Lower that down to like a three right now. I'm going to get some of these uh, darker colors here. <coughs> and I may exaggerate this a little bit. And that opacity is too high for what I'm trying to do right now, so I'll lower that down. That's a little too low, so I'll bring it back up. There we go. And get some of this wood graining that's coming through. Maybe this board over here I'll go all the way from top to bottom. And if I need to get straight lines, once again, I can touch down and then holding the shift key just drag down from there. Grab this lighter color, do the same thing, get a couple of strokes through here to build up this grain. For this, I'll increase the opacity just a touch more. And Control-Alt-Z or Command-Alt-Z is going to be helpful for this situation so that if I need to, I can undo what that last stroke was if it's going a little bit errant, which it is right now. So there, that feels a little bit better. This one comes down through here right there. Here once again I'm holding down shift so I can get this wood grain running exactly up and down. But I've got this changing texture. So now once again if I go select, deselect, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if I hide that top layer you can see that I'm starting to create these boards underneath and if you take the time you can come in and do the same thing where you can build up a board at a time uh, with each of these layers so that eventually you can start getting this nice texture across here. For the sake of these videos I'm not going to do the whole process right now so that you're not just sitting here watching me and listening the whole time. Um, instead I'm going to move on to the next portion. I'm going to end this video here and for the next video I'm going to come back and I'm going to add on the bands um, and then the plug and then I'm going to talk about some other possible things that could be done with this. So, uh, see you in the next video.